Hello everyone. We all get exposed to different kinds of sounds every day. Some are calming and pleasant, while others are so loud and unbearable that nobody can stand them for long. You probably don't even want to be around them in the first place. But have you ever wondered when you hear a really, really loud sound, what's actually the loudest sound humans have ever been exposed to? Like, is it car horns on the street? Or maybe airplane engines during takeoff and landing? Even heavy machines in factories and workshops? Well, here's the truth. Compared to one specific sound recorded back in 1883, all those sounds are just tiny whispers. Welcome to Voyager's legacy. Before we start, if you're new here, don't forget to subscribe and turn on the bell so you never miss any of our videos. All right, let's start by understanding how we actually hear sounds and how we measure whether a sound is loud or not. Sound travels in the form of waves, vibrations that cause disturbances in a material medium. The most common medium we deal with is air. When someone speaks or makes a noise, the sound vibrates air particles hundreds of times per second. This creates areas of high pressure and low pressure, and this wave starts moving away from its source until it reaches our ears, which is how we hear it. The louder the sound, the stronger these vibrations become, and we measure this loudness using a unit called the decibel, dB. Total silence equals zero decibels. A whisper equals about 30 decibels. Normal conversation equals around 60 decibels, like my voice right now. Up to this point, everything's fine, no harm done. But once sound levels go above 85 decibels, your ears are at risk of serious damage. For example, heavy traffic equals 85 to 90 decibels. An ambulance siren equals up to 120 decibels. A jet engine during takeoff equals 140 decibels. But believe it or not, even these are still within the normal range compared to what we're talking about today. On a peaceful, beautiful day in 1883, specifically on Krakatoa Island in Indonesia, the world witnessed what's still considered the loudest sound ever recorded in human history. The eruption of the Krakatoa volcano. This wasn't just any volcanic eruption, it was one of the most violent natural events Earth has ever experienced. The explosion produced a sound measuring an unbelievable 310 decibels. Let me put that into perspective. Scientists estimate that anything over 150 to 160 decibels is enough to rupture eardrums from a distance. So imagine what 310 decibels could do. It literally had the power to kill anyone near the source just from the sheer force of the sound. The sound was so intense that it was heard over 5,000 kilometers away. That's like hearing something clearly from New York all the way to Washington 14 times over. The shock wave from that explosion circled the entire planet three times. One island located just 17 kilometers from the epicenter lost all 3,000 of its residents due to the initial blast. Even a British ship named the Norham Castle, located about 65 kilometers away, reported that half the crew had their eardrums completely shattered. And the destruction didn't stop there. The eruption caused a massive tsunami with waves reaching up to 30 meters high wiping out 165 villages and coastal settlements and killing approximately 36,400 people. So why was the sound so powerful? As sound intensity increases, the pressure fluctuations in the air become more extreme. When those fluctuations reach a certain level, around 194 decibels, the low pressure zones drop to zero, basically creating a vacuum. At this point, Sound stops behaving like regular waves and starts pushing the air itself forward, causing what's known as a shock wave. That's when sound becomes more like an explosion than a sound. Now, you might be wondering, have there been other sounds close to that level? Yes, actually. One of the loudest man-made sounds was the atomic bomb explosions over Hiroshima and Nagasaki, estimated to have reached 224 decibels. Right after that comes the Saturn V rocket launch, monitored by NASA during its first stage ignition, which registered at 204 decibels. There's also the Chelyabinsk meteor, 
which hit Russia in 2013. It exploded mid-air at an altitude of about 25 kilometers, but still created a sound wave measuring 180 decibels, heard from up to five kilometers away, and caused widespread damage in the area. Surprisingly, nature isn't far behind when it comes to producing extremely loud sounds. In the animal kingdom, especially in the deep sea, whales are among the loudest creatures. The blue whale, the largest animal on Earth, produces underwater calls that reach up to 188 decibels. But it's not even the loudest whale. That title goes to the sperm whale, whose clicks reach an astonishing 230 decibels. What's even more amazing? Whales don't have vocal cords. They produce these sounds by moving air through specialized tubes connected to their throat. And finally, what's the quietest sound ever recorded? Scientists say the quietest sound detected so far is related to Brownian motion, the random movement of particles in gases or liquids, measured at negative 23 decibels. Just above that in the scale is the sound inside room 87 at Microsoft's main campus, the quietest room in the world, where sound levels can drop as low as negative 20.6 decibels. Microsoft built this room to test audio equipment under perfect acoustic conditions. Now, just to clarify, all the sounds we've discussed were recorded in material mediums, meaning air or water. We're not including space here, because in the vacuum of outer space, sound doesn't travel at all. So don't worry. We know there are some loud things happening in space, but they're outside the scope of this video. OK, that's it. If you made it this far, Thank you so much. You're awesome. Don't forget to give this video a like before you leave, so we know who stuck around till the end. And if you have any episode recommendations or topics you'd like us to cover next, leave them in the comments below. Peace.